Hey guys, I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and welcome to the second video in our character creation course series. In the previous video, we created this base mesh, and I have tweaked it a little bit to get the general form of the clothing and just kind of get it to where I'm completely happy with it. But if you haven't seen that video, please check out the card right here, and you will be able to set up your own base mesh and basically join us in this video. Now, if you have set up your base mesh already, and you're following along with the course, then what we're going to do in this video is separate out all of the pieces. So we have right now a single base mesh, but in order to model this a little bit better, we're going to separate it into a shirt, pants, shoes, hands, and the head. So let's go ahead and do that. But before we can separate things out, we need to create a backup because I cannot tell you the amount of times that I've been working on a character and then realized at some point that I messed up a form of the shirt or pants or something about the character. And I've had to delete my work and go back. But thankfully, I can delete what I've worked on, grab from the backup, and just re-pull off another piece. So we'll hit Shift D to duplicate and right click to leave it in place. And then we'll come over here to our outliner, hit the new collection button and call this collection backups. Now, my suggestion would be to create a duplicate version of every step of the way, just so that if something goes terribly wrong or you hate it and you just wanna start over, you have a backup that you can quickly go to. So we'll take this duplicated version that we created and drop it into our backups and then we we can hide the backups folder. From here, we are ready to apply our modifiers. So we'll apply them in the order that they appear. So we'll apply the mirror, then the skin, and then the subdivision surface. Now, thankfully, because we have that single edge running around the entire model, we can essentially get rid of half of our work for us right off the bat. So come up here to the X-ray, turn on X-ray, and then select all of the vertices on this side and hit X, and delete faces. Now it looks like we have some extra vertices hanging around over there, but we're good to go. So now what we can do is add a mirror modifier here and we only have to focus on the right hand side of our model. But if you have a reference that focuses on the left hand side, you know, just delete the right and keep the left. So we need to then separate out our pieces. So let's bring back our reference image and kind of figure out where things are going to be separated from. So this is generally the pants right in here. So we can just select all of this. I'm using C for the circle select. Once we've got all of those, you can hit P and then separate by selection. Now we have a new character base object in our outliner. So let's go back to object mode, select that, and we can see that that's the pants. So we'll call this pants, which makes sense. Then shift D, right click to leave in place and drop a copy in your backups. Then we can select the character base again and separate off the shoes. So do that same process. And you're gonna do that throughout the entire entire bit. So these are the shoes, we'll call them boots, shift D to duplicate, right click, leave it in place and drop it in the backups folder. And you get the general idea. So we're going to time lapse this and I'll see you after it's all separated. Okay. So we have all of our pieces done. And what we can see now is that we've got pants, a shirt, head, let's get out of x-ray, boots, pants, shirts, hands, and the head. All right, so the last thing we need to do in order to consider this model fully separated is fill in all of the gaps. So let's say we have these pants, for example, and we'll start there. And then you're basically going to do this with all of the other pieces as well. And that'll help with sculpting uh, so that we don't accidentally pull away parts that we shouldn't be pulling away. So let's go ahead and hide the shirt and we'll jump into edit mode on the pants. Now the pants here uh, are not even, but we can see in our reference model that they are. So what we're going to do is we are going to scale them to flat. So make sure your transform orientation is in global and then your pivot point is in the median point. From here, hit scale or S and then Z to lock it to the Z axis and zero to scale it 
to zero. From here, uh, I'm just going to adjust this. So I'm gonna hit GG, which allows me to uh, edge slide these and kind of line these up a bit better, I feel like. Then we can hit Alt Select to grab the entire ring, E to extrude, right click to leave it in place. Now that we've left it in place, what we wanna do is scale that extruded section together. But when we do that, you can see it pulls apart. So what we need to do is come over here to our mirror modifier, click the checkbox for clipping and then scale towards one another. And then we can reposition these vertices to be a little bit better spaced, fill that in, and that is gonna be good enough for sculpting. So we're basically gonna do that for the rest of these objects, and then we're ready to start sculpting, which will happen in a future video. Okay, so I just filled in all of those things, but there's a final detail that we need to do on the shirt, and I figured we'd go ahead and talk about that since we're doing the prep work here. So what we wanna do is we want to remove this vertex. And the reason for that is that these two are probably good. So what we'll do is we'll select all three, hit Alt-M, and then merge at center, which is gonna give us a bit more blocky shape, but that's okay because we'll fix that in uh, sculpting. So we'll hit Alt M again and fix that on the back end. And then just to make sure that we actually did fill that in, let's hide the pants and we can check the bottom because we haven't filled that in yet. So uh, having fixed the shirt now, we can E extrude, right click to leave in place and turn on clipping so that we can then scale towards one another and fill that in. All right, and for the final piece, we'll just fill this in and then inset to get ourselves a little bit. There we go, it's fine. We're gonna sculpt over that, so that's not gonna be the final topology anyways. All right, so our model is basically done. Thanks for watching everybody, thanks for following along, and in the next video, I will be showing you how to sculpt the head. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and I will see you in the next video.